Boom. Hello and welcome to the Executive Protection Lifestyle Podcast, Season 4. With your host, Byron Rogers, this podcast is dedicated to the executive protection practitioner, the private security professional. In this podcast, we're going to talk about the mental, emotional, psychological, physiological fitness that goes into being an effective efficient and effective executive protection agent. Whether you're in law enforcement, whether you're a mom that's looking at how to protect your children or a father that's focused on how to protect his family, I believe this podcast has something for all of you. We might even get into some tales from the crypts of true Hollywood stories from time to time. I'm doing this podcast because I feel the reality of this job is simple. If you really want to be good at executive protection, it's more than just a job. It really is is a lifestyle and those of you who've been in the game for any serious amount of time you already know what i'm saying is true so if that sounds interesting to you enjoy the show out boom what's going on you guys what's up what's up we got byron rogers here and rick sweeney we're gonna do a quick episode just about a number of things we're seeing in the industry some trends and uh you know just wanna kind of speak to speak to things in the industry demonstrate some some make some cool content for you guys and uh it's it's one of those impromptu episodes which are kind of my favorite because is when you get all the really good stuff so for those of you who don't know who rick is he's our training director at the league of executive protection specialists uh you know sec four i mean he's navy he's done uh, french foreign legion which i think is pretty awesome Anyways, but um, in my opinion, one of the best, best EP trainers I've ever sat under. So we're 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 uh, we're honored to have him at the league. So one of the things that I've been noticing in private security professionals, you know, that's been really getting my attention is um, we'll get guys out training sometimes, and we'll and and I'll run into professionals usually at one of our end docs, like getting on a team, mm-hmm. and they'll hit me with a few comments that concern me. There's the one where they're like, you know, we're shooting and, you know, maybe a civilian's out shooting them or someone who is currently training and the military guy will be like, well, you know, we didn't, we didn't shoot pistols in the military. And I'm like, but you carry a pistol around every single day, (laughs) you know? And and I just, I've never understood that. And another guy hit me with a comment that was kind of like, you know, uh, well, I've been working these details and I've been, you know, getting these contracts and it's like, I'm making money. So I just didn't think about it. I just thought I was good enough. And I was like, I mean, I, I get it. You know, I spent a lot of, when I first got out of the Marine Corps, I spent a lot of time being like, I've been to war twice. I'm going to be fine. You know? And it wasn't until actually my civilian friends made me come to a shooting competition that I started to really, really see the value in training and realize, hey, it's all the things I do when I'm not working that are going to make me like worth hiring, <laughs> you know? Right, yeah. uh, what are your thoughts? on? Well, I, yeah, when I got done running around overseas with a, with a rifle, um, I hadn't done a whole lot of handgun work either. Yeah. You know? And so, uh, but I, I decided, okay, well, I'm going to need something if I'm going to be running with a handgun in the States. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get some training. I did some training, but what I didn't realize was, you know, a lot of the fundamentals we were using overseas uh, translated back to a handgun here. So it was a real easy transition for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, if, uh, and the second thing was the environment, the protective environment is a lot different than the military environment. It's usually very offensive. Different mission. <laughs> uh, yeah. And so you do have to kind of uh, reel yourself in a little bit and you're a little bit more selective. You're talking about the use of force continuum now and liability. And there's all these other things that you have to consider before you let that round leave that barrel. Right. And so I think it was important initially to get some decent training. Mm-hmm. Um, it kind of changed my mindset because even doing protective details overseas, it was still kind of a very offensive mindset. Oh, yeah. You're ready for it to kick off at any time. Yeah. And everybody's a bad guy type of thing, you know, <laughs> right. and uh, it was it was a lot different. So it's it's crucial not only to go to a good fundamental marksmanship school, but to ramp things up and put yourself into a protective environment. Right. Uh, whereas you're not always going to shoot. Yeah. And, uh, and now let's see how you can do. And uh, as you know, in our training that we, we put on, you know, these guys sometimes are surprised. They don't know that they're going to be in a shooting drill. Yeah. And all of a sudden they're in a shooting drill. <laughs> and we've right. seen skill levels, you know, mm-hmm. drastically change yes. with that surprise. 
And so I think going through training like that or somebody else's, any good training program is going to give you those, those skills and kind of, even if you are a former military guy, but kind of uh, clean up what you, uh, what you maybe, yeah, what, what you were doing with the rifle now translating and cleaning up to, to, uh, uh, pistol marksmanship or combat yeah. marksmanship for protectors. Okay. Okay. So hugely important. hundred percent because there's, there's just, there's a different mission and there are different skills. And, you know, like you were saying, we see guys skill sets deplete when they're faced with the high level of the situations we put them in, you know, uh, scenario based training. And now, you know, you're more of your bandwidth is being sucked up while you're trying to navigate different scenarios. But the reality is that is what's going to happen, except it'll be much more high stakes in real life. Right. Right. You know, and so it's like really the time to do it. I think another huge valuable thing is guys were walking away from the, and we're talking, I mean, the whole, a lot of the, everything's valuable, but like just the kind of like the balls of what a man kind of thinks of when he thinks of, you know, these, these more protector jobs, like pistol alone, you know, right. yeah, <laughs> yeah. guys walk away with kind of understanding, man, I should be practicing this at home. I should get a cert pistol. And like, this is how you actually get good at these things. And there's really no, there's zero shame in it. Hey, uh, <laughs> I was over in Iraq for a couple yeah. of years and on vacations, I would yeah. come back and take, we were running with AKs and Brownings. Yeah. And I would come back and take an AK course. Yeah. And then I would take a Brownie course. Yeah. And then I would go take another one. Heck yeah. Uh, I would just keep doing it, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't, you know, I would never consider myself um, good enough. I needed to be uh, the best I could be before right. I went back. And this was all on my own dime. No company was paying for me. Right. Sometimes I'd go back and tell the team, you know, what I did. I went to two yeah. driving schools. I went to an AK shooting school and I went to a Brownie school. Yeah. And that was your whole vacation. Yeah. And it took me the exact, you know, 30, 30 days, you know, yeah. 30 days was our off time. That's awesome. So I took my whole thing. They're like, you pay for that yourself. Yeah. You? Well, yeah. I'm investing in myself. I have yeah. a client to protect. And it came to uh, all several clients to protect. I was running the yep. whole team. And uh, yeah, to me, it was, uh, it was a no brainer. You know, right. I knew I wasn't the greatest and I want, I needed to all be the, the more reason the yeah. best I could be. You know, yeah. we get these students out yeah. here at our school, right. Mm -hmm. uh, you've, you've seen the group that comes out, great mm -hmm. guys, great girls. Yep. They come with different skill levels. Yep. hundred percent here and here. Yeah. I don't, I don't need you to be all here. Mm -hmm. I just need you to go from here to here and then move up. Yeah. That's it. If I can yeah. get you to move up and be better than you were before you got to us, we we're did our winning. job, right. Yeah. Uh, are you safer now? Are you making better decisions? Are you hitting? Whereas before maybe day one, you weren't hitting. Right. If you're doing that, we're doing something right. And we, you've seen that that's what we're doing out there. hundred percent. And if I can get you some habits that you can work on on your own time, you know, I was so proud when I saw those guys take the, you know, like, Hey, I need to do some drive firing and I need to, you know, right. And my favorite, my favorite sentence, I thought I knew how to do this. I know, I know <laughs> exactly I, who you're talking about. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. man. But I realized that I don't know how to do any of this stuff, man. And that's where yeah. you want to be. The reason, you know, and it's it's such an upside down world. So it's like, if you see me on social media, you might think the reason I'm training and slinging and lead is because like cool guy stuff or lights, like, look how cool this is. Like, yeah, it turned into something that's quasi cool. But right. the reason is because I'm not that good. So I go train. <laughs> you know what I mean, the whole entire reason, like if you shoot with my squad at a competitive shooting thing, I'm like, like kind of upper middle class. Like I'm like, I, you know what I mean? Like my friends made fun of me when I started videotaping myself. They're like, you, like you're going to videotape you and put you on the internet. And I'm like, yeah, I think it's cool. I wanted to show the journey of getting better, but I'm training every day. I'm hitting the gym every day because I'm not that awesome. And I need every edge I can get. And I'm just like, I got to try to be better. <laughs> you know, people are paying me to protect yeah. their families huge that's the way i look at it and that's, you know I, I see i see comments sometimes oh, you're yeah. never gonna have to use a gun this that you know <laughs> you know what hopefully you don't hopefully hope um, to high heaven we don't. what i like to tell the students out there is we're on the dumb and dumber program yeah uh, so you're saying there's a chance you know there's a <laughs> one in a million yep. chance yeah yep. there's a still a chance yeah and if i'm paid to protect them isn't that my primary duty my primary respect. soft skills is what they're going to see all day long Every and you need day. those and you need those two right i mean right. you have to have that or you're not going to survive right if you're just ready to spearhand you know everybody, everybody in the throat, around. Then, you're a liability uh, yeah you're, you're not going to yeah. be great but 
shouldn't you be good at the protection part of your protection job also? Right. And that goes with the firearms. That yeah. goes with client evacuations. Yeah. Uh, we actually, uh, our team did a uh, limo down drill in yeah. Brazil. We weren't getting like attacked. Like legit had to get well, Yeah, but we yeah. weren't getting attacked. Yeah. The limo went down. <laughs> it just did. Because you were just in Brazil yeah. and that's but what they had. Yeah. How impressed was the client when he realized that the whole team and all their luggage was in the other vehicle in about 45 seconds, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And they were pretty impressed that that happened. Yeah. But, you know, our guys, they had been through our schools and everything. And so yep. they're rolling up and they're like, ah, the limo's down. Okay. Yeah. So they're telling their driver, pull up to this side of it. Yep. And they got out like a limo down. Who wants to stay on the side of the road? Everybody knows in hot areas, if you're on the side of the road for more than five minutes, the boogeyman comes out. Oh, yeah, 100%. So you got to get moving, right? Damn, and man. so it was funny because the client actually noticed how proficient they were. So, wow. yeah, okay, they weren't under attack. But. Um, they got some skills they could use. So right. what we try to do is, yeah, we're going to give you a bad day at the office out in training. Yep. You can dumb that down to wherever you need to be. 100%. It might just be something happened to the car. Yeah. And you want to get your, you know, your, your client and their children over mm -hmm. to this other car quickly. Right. You have a plan now. Right. You know what this guy does. You know what this guy does. Exactly. And you have some sort of a plan. So you're tweaking what you maybe got in training but you're using what you learned. Right. And now look what's going on in some of the big cities in America. You just never know when you have to go pick up the kids at school yeah. for your client and the riots are breaking out. Yeah. Uh, and now you're getting caught up in one of those, one of those damn, you know, no win See, situations. Exactly. And you've got to, you've got to use your training and yeah. that that's happening to people. I mean, you know, you guys know how unstable our environment is, which is why what we're doing is becoming more and more in demand. But I mean, it's just, you know, you never know what's going to happen. You never know when it's going to happen. And so I think, you know, this kind of phrase I keep hearing in the industry, which is like, oh, you're never going to have to do that. Oh, you're, you know, why do that training's excessive? Or it's like, for me, it's like, I don't have a crystal ball, man, you know, and I've got to be as advertised. And it's like an integrity thing for me, you know, and I, I have to be able to be like, yes. And I can hear, and I know some of the guys that are like, well, you should never have to do that. If you have to do any of those things, it's because you've already failed at a hundred million things. Maybe, there's maybe. A, at the same but, time, I've heard that. Down yep, there. Get up. <laughs> there's a whole bunch of guys in the areas that I work in. Yeah. I, I usually only work in high threat areas yep. that would disagree with you. Yep. That's and exactly when you, what I was When going. you listen to their stories. Mm -hmm. They did everything right. It's yeah, just you, their day. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. When you're in an area where these things happen a lot, yeah, mm -hmm. you're in a problem. If anybody thinks that you can't get attacked if you do your advanced right and all these other things, you're completely wrong. And that's yeah. a ridiculous statement. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, started coming out years and years ago. And it's one of those ones that stuck. Yep. And it's completely false. Yeah. I've heard a lot of these false statements that have stuck around for years. Yep. And these maybe are these are old school individuals that can't get that out of their head. Yeah. But we can mitigate a lot by our planning and contingencies. You know, mm -hmm. that's what we do. We that's don't want trouble. We want to avoid the right. art of avoidance is what we practice yeah, exactly on a daily what basis. It is. Yep. But you can't always avoid everything. No, oh, the environment we're in right now. Yeah, you know, you, I know what was going through both of our minds when we're going down that Some one way streets, in, one way yeah, out. Yeah, man, the okay. whole time, just like man. right. And then hearing from the guys with us what was happening on this road, you know, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And now going over in our head, okay, this is happening here. Yeah. Okay, now this is what we can do to maybe uh, avoid. Yeah. But or even it's react. not an absolute. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. and so that's what you have to think. You have to understand it's not an absolute. Okay, mm -hmm. so we can't avoid it. What's our next step? Yeah. Now, what's our what's our next XO, SOP? Yep. We can't avoid this uh, this blocking. Yeah, we're uh, here now. Yeah, we're yeah, yeah. trapped on this one MSR for the next. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, <laughs> one way in, one way out. I've got to react. Say, you have to take that. So you might yeah. think that you know you read somewhere online. Oh, always want three routes. Guess what, buddy? There's You're not, not, always, yeah, there's there's not always three points. routes where you go. And, and guess what? The They're going to know where the choke points are too. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and so, yeah, I, I hear that sometimes. And like maybe someone got lucky and had uh, a career where nothing happened. I don't know, you know, but I don't have that luxury. We I had one of our partners today uh, yeah. bring up something, you know, nice that, you know, and, and valid that, you know, yeah, law enforcement also, you know, a lot of yes. law enforcement officers go through their entire career. They never have to draw their weapon and yeah. fire. Right. Same thing at EP. Hopefully yeah. you don't. But the way I look at it, I'm jipping the client. If I can't protect them when the shit goes down, I can't perform. That's that's all there is to it. So I need to have that in my back pocket. I just have to have it. 100%. And yeah. you don't find out until this goes down. Yeah. That's when we find out you can't perform. So I, I you know, I wanted to just really kind of unpack that a bit because I think it's a very dangerous 
mentality to take. I think maybe even rooted in either you got lucky for your career, nothing went too bad. Or, and I do also think guys that are afraid and don't know if they have what it takes, uh, they parrot that stuff back. And so I think it's a fear-based kind of concept. It's like, no, because if you're, if you're righteous, if you're in right standing with yourself and your training and you know, you're doing the best you can, and you know, you can bring some force to bear if needed. Um, and we don't just train the, the force part of it. We also train the medical and the evasion, you know, in the vehicles, like you get the full spectrum, but, right, right. but if you don't believe that you have that, then I could see someone parroting something like that back then, because it's, it's just not right. You're hired to protect you superior systems and be able to bring t- to bear superior tools to make sure you can get the job done no matter what happens because neither of us have a crystal ball. That, in my opinion, is 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 really the protector's way, you know. And so that's that's what we strive for. You it, know? It's like insurance, right? Yeah. <laughs> what do we have insurance for? Yeah, we have vehicle insurance in case we mm-hmm. get into an accident. When was yeah. the last time you were in an accident on the road? I, it's yeah. been so, I can't even remember. We're paying insurance every yeah, single day. But have I been paying that insurance mm-hmm. for 20 years, even though I don't? I have not had an accident, I think, since the 80s. Right. Um, I'm trying to remember if I even had anything. Uh, but I have not had an actual motor vehicle accident in the States right? Um, since the 80s. But have I been paying insurance every year for mm-hmm. the last 40 years? You're yes, I, right. yes, I have. <laughs> Why? Because not just because, well, it's the law. You have to. Well, yeah, also, if something goes wrong and I do get in that accident that I wasn't expecting, because nobody's going to wake up in the morning and think, I'm going to get in an accident right. today, you know, I'm covered. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah, man. What's up, Al? You want to get in on this? The, boy, the boys are back. The boys <laughs> yeah, are back. Burritos, from, from, yeah, some empanadas. Yeah, empanadas. What do get? Empanadas. Yes. Yeah, man. Right. All right. So we're, you know, and the other part of that, I think what makes this maybe a little bit interesting and kind of confusing is you will use your soft skills 99.9, like every single day. You'll use your soft skills every single day. You will need to practice your hard skills when you're not working. Most of the you most guys don't sit there and practice soft skills. You know, they kind of learn, right, they right. absorb, they learn how to survive, how to talk, how to move. But then, you know, at, but then what you have to practice when you're off work is your hard skills. You know, I was talking to another guy who's coming back to our driving course already, you know, and he's like, I want to get good at this. I want to be able to have a baseline of performance I can right. depend on. And, and, and he, and he's right. Like he was, he, he got it last class, but he didn't really like, like he wasn't snap crack. So like, he's coming back. Is he's he, coming back. I, you're he's coming, I, was I, like, I thought I got a message on that. I'm like, yeah. oh, wait a minute. Just you were just, we're going just through, yeah. our course in May. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The first oh, one. You know what? I'm glad to have him. I back. respect the heck awesome. Then he's going to be awesome now, but just like all of us, right. Just like me coming back on vacation from Iraq and sending mm-hmm. myself through two driving schools and two shooting schools. Right. We need it. 100%. You know, we always need it. Yeah. Don't be the guy or girl that has gotten their training and then is on the job for 20 years and never did another training. Right. Uh, if you're not regularly doing this stuff, you're doing something wrong. And who would you want to hire? Which protector would you want protecting your women and children and yourself if you had you know, a, a level of risk that made sense to have protection? Would you want the guy that's like, oh, I didn't think I was going to need all that. So, you know, I didn't take the driving and the shooting course. Or would you want the guy that's like, no, nah, man, I'm out here hammering while I'm not at work. So I can be as I can do no matter what happens, what you hired me to do, which guy, you know, that's and that's kind of the way that I and as employers, like, how, what do you feel, how do you feel when you right, see right. a guy that's invested in his own training, you know, and, uh, you know, I look at his I look at his training jacket and I'm like, this guy put himself through medical, he put himself through right. driving course, he put himself I more than even like the dollar spent, I'm going, this guy gets it. Like this guy wants to be a legit protector. This guy's not just here for the paycheck. He's not going to be bugging me about breaks and all the different <laughs> stuff, <laughs> you know, you know, about eating 800 times a day, you know, he's going to be, he's there. He understands the soul of what protection's all about. Like the Praetorian guard wasn't like, yo, we got some, you know, <laughs> we're just going to use back entrances and stuff. But hey, you know, but maybe that's archaic. So, yeah, no, I wanted to definitely address that because I've seen that pop around the industry. And I honestly don't want anyone to sit here and think that, you know, it's good enough. Uh, here it was. It's good enough to just get on an EP contract or it's good enough to be on a detail. It's good enough to be making money. Um, 
and, and, and not training and then getting blindsided when your company sends you to one of our courses uh, or, or, or when something bad actually happens and you need those skills. Something else that I'd like to lightly mention is like the shooting stuff's really, really cool. You probably have the highest probability of needing to use your medical training <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> than and, any of the and other. Not even stuff the cool guy medical stuff, yeah, but yeah. the medical emergency stuff. Yeah, like the AED, like uh, the blood the, sugar the, issues, yeah. strokes, you yeah. know, uh, maybe an EpiPen, like you know, that. yeah, yeah, <laughs> severe allergic, yeah. Know, food poisoning overseas. You yeah, know. learn you're how to use, use not can. You're not going to use anything else. But should, yeah. you, should you have the other stuff? Absolutely, one hundred percent. Like the yeah. cool guy stuff, you know, stop the bleed, stop the breathe, all that, start the breathing, and all that stuff. That's yeah. awesome. But think about your every day with your principal, with your client, and you're in a restaurant. And someone starts choking. Someone starts having a heart attack. This could literally happen any day ever, like to you. You know, you have it right now, and uh, you know what's going to happen. Your client is going to look at you <laughs> that's what's gonna happen. it can be someone clear across the entire restaurant they still probably are gonna look at you you know and and what are you gonna do you I, I you've gotta know what to do because they will never forget no, the no. way you act in this one your whole career with them comes down to that one moment you know so don't neglect the medical stuff and then obviously you know, the driving and the counter surveillance, these are all, all skills you want to stack. But well, the good stuff about the driving also mm -hmm. is even though we do some hardcore driving out there, yeah. and the track is, you know, but a lot of the stuff we're doing too is yeah, you're doing break unpack uh, that a little bit. You're doing a hundred drop-offs and pickups because every time we change our drivers, guess what we make them do? Drop we do off, a drop off yeah. and then we do a pickup and then we roll out. So these guys yep. are girls and go through our courses, the drop off and pickup positioning your vehicle over and over again, you so get that instinctive. By the time what are you going to do when you're in LA or San Francisco or Washington, DC or mm -hmm. whatever, you're going to drop and pick up your, your clients. So right. you're, you're getting these little things the whole way communication between vehicles, right? It doesn't have to be an emergency to communicate between vehicles Yeah. Uh, to talk about where you're going to slow, where you're going to stop. You do all that in our course right. is you're talking about um, how to do an Execute admin stop on a vehicle. Yeah. It doesn't have to be an emergency. Mm -hmm. And so by doing all this over and over again, you're actually getting a ton of skills that you're going to be using right. daily. Everything you see, yeah, it would be pretty boring if we saw you, or, you know, if we if we put on the on the videos and the training videos that we're putting online. The communication. Yeah, and just, all just the you know, rolling to an admin stop. Right. I don't think I'd want to put that on there. Right. I used to tell people that used to kind of give me crap about, oh, all you do is the hard skills. Yeah, well, right. um, if they saw the weeks that our yeah. agents were actually at the laptops, we provide them banging yeah. out expense reports, right? The real stuff. plans, yep. uh, computer advances, mm -hmm. uh, after action reports, yeah. daily activity reports, because <laughs> yeah. they had to do all of that when they went on our mock missions. That's real. That's we didn't real. do one graduation mission. We did yeah. seven. And that's what right. we're going to be doing with, with these programs we're rolling yeah, out. Like, we're doing course. multiple ones and yeah. you're doing all that admin stuff. Yeah. But how ridiculous would that have been? If we videotaped that and put that on YouTube, right. you guys wouldn't care. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, people would click right through that one and go to somebody who was shooting, driving, doing bloody medical, yeah, exactly. all the cool guy stuff. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, we didn't put in all of our, uh, we didn't show all of our admin stuff we right. were doing, and you absolutely need that 100 percent because that's what you're going to be doing day to day. Because the other reality of the game I've seen uh, that's that's always kind of blown me away, but I've used to my advantage is you get out here and. No one has any idea on how to do an advance, you know? No, a lot of guys don't actually have any idea on how to do a proper advance or a lot of the administrative type things that kind right, of been right. avoiding them. And so, you know, hey, learn, go somewhere and learn. But it just goes back to that whole like, hey, man, I've been working. I've been on the job, learning on the job training, which means you've been doing what's good enough or what works. But there's so much to be said for when you actually get some training from people that have been operating in the industry. And one of the things that I really, uh, I think is ultra special is the fact that, you know, Rick does high threat stuff and our training is around high threat work. So the reason, and cause I think you guys are going to see a lot more like Kubia, cool guy looking training videos in the industry. I think you guys are going to start seeing a lot more like, 
you know, high speed, gritty EP stuff, you know, kind of like no one had uh, an executive rejection podcast. And then after someone did it first, <laughs> you know, now everyone's got an EP podcast, which is awesome. It's way better for the industry. You know, no one had any EP trading online. And then after some, and then and after someone did it, now everyone's got, you know, the online and the hybrid courses and stuff, which is great. And it's better for the industry. I'm all about it. You know, you see this do co-ops and stuff, but um, I think next what you're going to start seeing is a lot of like gritty high speed stuff, which I think is really cool, but, and, and hopefully it's better than the industry. And there's a lot of people that do it really awesome. The thing I want you guys to kind of think about is, you know, I think with our instructors, you know, Rick runs a company in high risk areas. And so our training is geared towards a high risk uh, kind of training model. And the reason that's important is because you might think you don't need all that, but if you can perform in a high risk training model and be successful, the rest of the stuff becomes easy. And it's not, there are very few training situations I've found myself in that are not just taking a police principle or taking a, a, like a secret service principle. This is, these are principles specifically for private security professionals not government officials, nothing else. This is for our industry, by our industry. Well, and also, the, when you say, oh, you're doing a high-risk course, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. we don't need a high-risk course. Yeah. They think uh, you're, you're talking about a 12-man like a twelve man State yeah. Department team. No, when I first started doing these training courses yeah. uh, in a pretty large scale, which was about 10 years ago, the whole goal was I had been working in high-threat areas with the exception of a couple of years in Iraq. We did plate carrier details there. Um, but everywhere else I worked, even if it was high threat, it could be a Columbia, it could be a Lebanon, um, all these different places. Uh, more recently, uh, we were rolling around Syria and some other fun places. Uh, but most, oh yeah, Mexico since 2007, uh, we've pretty much had a full-time presence somewhere in Mexico. So uh, these were, either, it was called high threat. Uh, it doesn't mean you're wearing a plate carrier and running right. with an AK <laughs> or an M4. Well, and um, especially not that you have all the assets that you do. So, yeah, yeah. Be so even like more. The, most of these areas we work in, we're yeah. still one to three men, mm -hmm. well, one to three women, you know, uh, but mm -hmm. there's a, a less than a three or less on our team. If we're, we're lucky, we have dedicated drivers. Yeah. Uh, most of the time on, in these areas that we're going to now, we're not armed. Mm -hmm. um, so we have to, uh, we use, uh, you know, this, the business plan we've had for uh, business model we've had for years mm -hmm. is we use uh, trained and vetted locals. Yep. Uh, that we've set up in all these different areas, all these different regions. Yeah. And they're basically our, our mobile holsters, if you will. Yeah. Uh, and that's how we roll. So quite often and we're not armed in those, but if they stuff an M4 in that seat next to me, I'm, I, you get a warm, I get a warm and fuzzy <laughs> yeah, yeah. like that. I'm not going to touch it. And you course. guys can say whatever you want. That's how it is traveling the world. I've been over 70 yeah. countries. I've been to some of these countries and I'm telling you the best you're going to get, unless you're on some really unicorn situations, you're going to get the best you're going to get is some locals. You better vet them properly. You better know who you're dealing with. And it's going to be you. They're going to have the guns and you're going to be sitting there. So though uh, we're, we're, we're building this kind of as a high mm -hmm. threat, but what right. I've already called it is high threat, low, low profile. Yeah. So you're still one to three people on the team. Yep. You're, but you're still in a high threat area. So you better be good at all the stuff you're doing. You all better be stuff. good at the driving, the <laughs> medical and if you had to, you know, get to work, procure, yeah, you could, uh, you could rock and roll. Right. Uh, but so that's, that's basically our, our attitude. We're not trying to right. teach you to be a 12 man PSD team, a state department team. Right. And oh yeah. So if you have to take your client from LA and they have a house in Cabo, right. You better have some knowledge in high threat techniques if you're going to be rolling around in Mexico. Ooh, yeah. Uh, Cancun, Tulum area. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just like that right there and all it is is you that's know. where we're at guys mm -hmm. um so these types of areas if you know what's going on um you're gonna have to be schooled up on some some high threat techniques will right. you use them hopefully not right uh, but if you're schooled up on them then you get how to posture your vehicle right uh, you get how to place your your agents you already have, have done your uh done your sops on mm -hmm. who's responsible for what yeah. uh you have some direction rather than i hope nothing happens uh, cause that would really be bad and then have <laughs> right. no direction or, right. or, you know, no, yeah. no, anything. Well, the chaos yeah. just right, you right. go missing in the chaos, you know, right. and you know what to look for and you understand how to recognize the anomalies and you understand how to get people in and out and all the things that you should know how to do. It's different in these environments, but that I think that's, what's what I love about what we're doing. And don't get me wrong. 
Like I said, there are amazing, really amazing schools out there. Lots of amazing training options. Um, I just want to highlight some things that I think that I love about what we're making available is this is all about private security. You know, it's not about this, the state department or any of the other awesome organizations out there. This is what we do in other countries in a high threat posture, you know, and I love it because I grew up, you know, I grew up doing this man, you know, and all around the world after the Marine Corps. And it's refreshing to see this type of stuff be made available, the real deal, you know, some real deal stuff, which kind of gets me into, you know, the driving side of the house. I want to make sure you guys know about the reality that there are different levels and different things you're going to walk away from with driving packages. Cause it's kind of like a hot, hot training offering now. Right. You know, yep. and, and um, I think that uh, it's just important for people to understand, you know, I see some things that are being called security driving courses, but I don't see anything actually related to security driving in the curriculum um, other than like, Good driving, <laughs> you yeah, know, really good courses out there. Yeah. But a lot of times they stop short. Um, I guess if you're going to be rolling in a Mexico right. or a Colombia, right. uh, even if your client goes over to uh, to Europe or other places, right. even Asia, places that drive very defensively. Right. If you've had, you know, like we do proximity driving, which is right. driving extremely close and moving close to other vehicles. We do that mm -hmm. before we start having you make contact with vehicles so you get used to it. Right. All these things are very important. Right. Uh, a lot of people don't want to ding up their nice new vehicles or rental vehicles. So we have, <laughs> yeah, we, we run you guys through uh, newer SUVs, late model SUVs, because you're going to have yeah. to get used to moving those things around because that's a, you know, uh, most of the details, you're gonna I, get. Most yeah. of the details <laughs> I do, I'm rolling with those. Mm -hmm. Unless you're in a really crappy area, you're in the back of a van or. Yeah. And you're smart enough to know you want to get like something that. low profile. Yeah. 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 But uh, yeah. So the the dynamics of the newer vehicles is right. great and we do that but then right. we need to give you some uh some beaters to to beat up a little bit right that's why we're doing the uh you know have these the old crown vicks with ram bars on them to right. that proximity driving uh, to learn how to uh to move through obstacles right. whether it be a vehicle or something else mm -hmm. uh, if you guys watch these videos coming out of chile a lot um santiago all the carjackings and robberies where they're usually they're trying to block individuals in with their cars yep. the population have realized themselves that they need to ram through and yep. that's what they're doing now over and over again if you're not used to doing that because you've been taught since you were 16 years old to not don't get another car me. it's really daunting if you don't understand how right. to do that and how it's to like, push that vehicle out of the way yeah. you know um, so, and it can backfire if you don't know how to do it right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. You can take your vehicle out if you don't do it right. Right. Uh, but yeah, so just the, the dynamic stuff is hugely important. And there's some great dynamic schools out there right. that will teach you how to control that vehicle. Right. So we start you with need the dynamic stuff. You have to have it. It's, yeah. it's, it's mandatory. So we start with that as well. Right. Because we don't want to throw you into the uh, the proximity driving and the uh, the, the kind of the, uh, the more technical stuff before right. you know how to dominate that vehicle. Right. And then we can get into the, uh, the uh, security driving. That's actually driving in first uh, two vehicles. Mm -hmm. And then we go up to three. Right. Um, how to communicate in between the two, how to posture them, depending on what you see in the environment. Uh, and then we kind of cap the whole thing off with bringing in immediate actions and contact right. driving where you're actually making contact with other vehicles. Cause you know, again, it just takes a quick YouTube search uh, to see that that's what's going on out there. Now mm -hmm. that is, that is a way to get out of a, a real jam in the places in which we work is going through another vehicle. If you have to. Yeah. Not, I think, and I, 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 I've seen a lot of, you know, training options pop up. So I, I, the main things I always want to illuminate is, you know, Vehicle dynamics, very important. Get your vehicle dynamics and understand how to dominate that vehicle. Some say get, you know, 80% of that vehicle's capabilities. This is where you set the baseline for being able to outperform others on the road. Ultra important, you know, and then start looking at communicating in a motorcade, you know, or convoy, whatever you guys want to call it, but being able to understand where you need to be in that motor. Just, just like if you think about walking formations and your AIC, like, when are you in front of the client? When the principal, when are you behind him? When are you to the left? When are you to the right? You know, when do I need to step up? When do I, um, you know, not engage someone, but when do I, when do I block? You know, when do I cradle the vehicle? Like, where do I need to be when, while we're on the road, 
you know, we hit that with two vehicles. This is like actual security driving. You know, this is, if you think about it as you're protecting your principal's limo and the guy inside the limo knows where he needs to be. So you guys are doing the dance to keep everything safe. Um, and then also the communication is so big, like understanding like, hey, static right, static left, stale yellow, stale green, like everyone through like like making sure you guys are communicating you know where you're going to be you know when you're turning around you're able to um call it out when you're going to cross load you have your own language and things like that these are these are not exotic things these are basic security <laughs> driving behaviors of private security agents yeah. but like fortunately um you know when i started in this industry i started with a crew that did that and, you know, I haven't seen it much out there in the game and I've been to some trainings and I haven't really seen much of it, which the trainings were amazing. But I really want to try to um, really just explain that these are things we should also be looking at and assessing when we go to get training. So we know exactly what we're getting. Are we learning how to dominate one vehicle? The foundation of what you need. Am I going to learn communication and how to actually operate in a at least two to three person uh, motorcade because you might not ever go up to three to learn how to do it, but I'll definitely probably be in a two man motorcade at, at different times. And then the highest level, which is when it's like leaving the range and going to do force on force, contact driving. Can I understand how to actually physically use this vehicle to protect my principal, dominate the space, yeah. stay on the road? That's it. Yeah, man. Those are the things you should be looking at with the driving stuff. Enough about that. We wanted to wanted to throw some stuff at you guys with the training. Um, definitely address kind of some of the attitudes we're seeing out there in the game, um, and 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 just rein in on those things. But closing, kind of some closing thoughts. What would you say? Question for you, Rick. What would you say is was maybe your hardest or most difficult moment over the course of your career? Like something that happened that was like, man, you know, I learned a lot from that. Or um, I hope that never happens again. <laughs> or I, I hope I can tell people about this one day so it doesn't happen to them. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, I, I can some challenges. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm coming up with like a, kind of different challenges that, that I've had. Yeah. Um, some challenges, and a lot of these can be mitigated. And some of these things happen early on is uh, not paying attention to having really good comms and then actually running into a serious problem. Mm. And you're not able to communicate back to who you need to communicate to because maybe I think, I think this first time this, this happened, it happened pretty much twice in my career where I wasn't able to have the communications I needed to, and we were having a bit of an emergency situation. Wow. Uh, and I, it was probably my fault completely. And yeah. so what I learned to do on advance is, um, every section of my advance, every section of that route or the routes we're going to be taking now, um, I check all my comps okay. just to make sure no matter what I'm using, they work, including cell phone. And so we, were, we, we, were, yeah, we were talking about this earlier. Yeah, we were driving yeah, out yeah. some roads out there. and Some we, spooky roads. You well, know, it gets we, quiet and there's no lights. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. also what we do now is during our advance, we map a cell phone coverage. Yeah. So wow. if cell phone is the only way you can reach certain individuals. Mm -hmm. Now, these certain individuals might be a police station or a safe zone that you're driving into. Mm -hmm. They're not going to have your radios. They're not going to have the, uh, the gear that you brought out for your team. Right. So your phone is what you're going to be needing. Yeah. Uh, you're not always going to have a cell phone. Cell phones are illegal in a lot of countries. You yeah. guys have to understand it and wow. check that out because who was somebody, <laughs> some, yeah, somebody yeah. got, somebody got, uh, sat phones. somebody got popped with a sat phone going into a, a country, not a lot yeah. of yeah, um, man. And you have to look at that stuff. So you're not yes. always going to have that sat phone in your back pocket. Right. Uh, so having bad comms and not, uh, not knowing you had bad comms until it was Where too late. Went. So that's why mapping our, our dead zones, yeah. uh, became hugely important to us. So we can actually put that on our, our hard map that we build that nice. this is a telephone dead zone. And why? Because bad guys do that too. I was about to say, cause if I was a bad guy, I'd hit you yep. right in the dead zone. If they know that nobody wow. can get signal there, <laughs> yeah. you know, most individuals get kidnapped. Yeah, they're not a security team. Most yeah. of the people that get kidnapped or, you know, driving, driving solo, they're on mm -hmm. their own. You know, usually bad guys don't want to, at least, especially in this AO, right. uh, Mexico, um, they, uh, they generally are not going to pick a team with a, 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 yeah, a bodyguard team. Now they have, right. but they usually will, will choose to grab somebody who does not have that. Right. So that person is probably not going to have a cell phone or a sat phone in their back pocket. Right. Um, so making sure um, I've had good comms because there's been some situations where, and I know the first one was 100% my fault. 
Uh, I did uh, not. I did not have my <laughs> cell phones. I yeah. did not. I did not have the proper comms equipment to yeah. get it out to who I needed to. So 100% my fault. Uh, nobody got hurt or anything like that. But it was a type of situation where, uh, you know, this is is looking bad. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's just going to happen. So, I mean, I guess that's more of a lesson than an exact incident. Mm-hmm. But um, no. I, I would say that's all part of your advanced guys. If you're not you're not doing complete advances. Make sure you're mapping your comms out. Yeah. Uh, going toward airports and around government buildings too, uh, you'll find that when I was in Juarez, Mexico, um, not only did my radio stop working, but my phone stopped working around the comms, the U.S. consulate there. So uh-huh. somebody was jamming everything jamming up around there. there. Exactly. Uh, so you need to know that right. uh, because if you know that, now you'll have you'll make sure that you have your you know contingencies there, yeah. and you'll map out your little you know red zone there so that you're not you're not going to be caught with your pants down. Wow. Um, so more of a lesson than an actual an incident, but that was a hard lesson, I guess, that I learned was uh, making sure your comms are good, not thinking that eh, it'll probably be OK. Yeah, it will I not be OK. Yeah, 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 it will that's... never, never be OK. It's literally <laughs> how we don't think like that's the opposite. Right. You know, I love that. That is extremely valuable. Uh, I always learn something when I hang out with him, you guys. Uh, on top of that, to make sure I, don't, I mean, are they able to take your route mapping class? Is that online? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's up. That's up and running. Um, again, we always hard map. When we're in high threat areas, we hard map our routes uh, because if you're just using your phone um, or a GPS, you're, you're getting a little tiny square mm-hmm. and it's not already, it did not pre-map all the uh, safe zones and things for you. You might be able to star them and stick them in your phone. Uh, but when push comes to shove, uh, I want a nice big hard map that already has alternate routes, everything that going to my safe zones and all these different things that we use. So yeah, yeah. you can, you can check that out. Uh, just type in uh, sec four, three sixty in Google and you guys will find it. We'll throw the link down at the bottom of the, uh, the, in the show notes. If you're a civilian and you want to learn how to do some tricky dicky security stuff that like, if you, you know, have a ranch that you want to get to, or if you have a place you want to get to, if there's civil unrest, take the route mapping course if there's if there's uh i'd say this is the best the, the the product i've seen and the guys that i've seen go through that course and come and work with me that's been the best result i've seen from anyone um out there in the industry there may be better ones out there i'm not saying no that. no there's not no <laughs> outstanding <laughs> yeah just so you guys know it's honestly it is the best one I, i've personally ever seen 100 percent. but we set it up um, too so you guys could do it with uh everything free online uh, what I'm yeah. talking about free online, I mean, the tools that we use, uh, you can get from any computer all over the world. Yeah. Uh, and you don't have to have any uh, any expensive software or anything because the government will have some, some pretty good mapping software out there. Mm-hmm. You don't need any of that. Uh, you can use the things that are openly uh, available, available for free too. online. And that's that's every 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 piece of what we use. You can use that um, for free. That's awesome. Yeah. Free is the key. Yeah. Uh, knowledge is potential power. But anyways, um, let's see. So the next question for you, which I'm gonna I'm gonna hit, but this is just a heads up, is uh, proudest moment in the industry. Uh, okay, and then uh, I, I will. I got that. You one. got then that was an easy one. Well, okay, so we <laughs> our, my company doesn't only do EP work, but yeah. we do uh, some K and R consulting. Mm. And uh, usually, when we this is not a full time thing for us by yeah. any means, but, but there might be some training coming up on it. Whatever. Yeah, we <laughs> some of you guys out there have been through some of our our training. And uh, we're going to put in a little online uh, online deal up there, so you guys kind of understand the process. If you're working in areas, this could be uh, certain places in Africa, Haiti, uh, Mexico, Latin America. If you're working in places with your client that has uh, kidnap issues, you kind of want to understand the process. Yeah, and you want to know before you go there. Yeah, because if something goes wrong with your client um, and there there is a kidnapping scenario, and don't think it can't happen when there's uh, there's security staff with them because it happens here in Mexico all the time. Right. Um, they prefer not, but if they really want a certain target, they're going to go after them. Yep. Um, so uh, you kind of should understand the process and knowing what you should have in place before you go out with your client, or maybe you're a consultant and you don't actually travel with your client, uh, knowing how to consult them and what they should put in place yep. before. There's a lot of things about insurance that individuals don't understand out there. Uh, it's it's a little bit foggy. And I see some people writing articles on uh, kidnap and ransom. Some of them are good. And some of them you can tell they've probably never worked a case in their life. Uh, and that's no joke. Um, but you can, you can tell that they probably read some other stuff on the internet and they're yeah. interested in the subjects. And they wrote a, a piece on it, but they've actually never worked any cases. Oh, so the, the proudest moment i think was the first the first uh 
case you were? Uh, the first, not the first case, mm. um, but the first victim that we actually were able to recover ourselves. And let me tell you why I say that, because if you do a, uh, a kidnap and ransom consultation, uh, you're not kicking in doors in foreign countries. What? Anybody that tells you you're doing that, you're they're they're. I've been kicking in doors they're since pulling their you're pulling your legs. Sorry, yeah. but you're not you're not uh, you're not charging in. Uh, you know, um, a, a yeah, barn with, uh, with your victim tied up in the middle of the barn. You know, um, with, it, uh, yeah, in the middle of uh, northern Mexico somewhere. That doesn't yeah, happen. Was, yeah, that movie, anyways. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Proof of Life. Proof was of, a you haven't movie. seen Proof of Life? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, Proof of Life was a great movie based on a true story, but yeah. there was no rescue at the end. Just so you know, the guy had to actually get himself off the uh, the mountaintop, and it's a great story. One of our instructors uh, tells this story in our classes, our KNR classes. Nice. Uh, but it's an, it's a great story. So the first time I actually was able to grab a victim, you know, in the movies, you know, you give the money and then you get the victim. It doesn't work that way in real life. What happens is you put the money out somewhere or have the money dropped by your team and then you have to wait. And then maybe hours later, uh, the sun will start coming up and your victim will be on the road Emerge. somewhere all ripped up and blindfolded. <laughs> and they'll just pop up on a road somewhere. Somebody yeah. will take them to the police station yeah, and then you'll get it. the call from there. So uh, I guess actually running into a victim just by blind luck after the ransom was paid. It was about an hour after it was paid. This was in Mexico, Tijuana, Eastern Tijuana. And uh, this, this guy, this is a very rare thing where you actually run across the victim. Mm -hmm. uh, after the ransom was paid, the kidnapper said uh, that your, your clients, uh, your, your victim is in a tunnel yeah. and you'll never hear from us again. A tunnel. And when like, that when that goes dark, when that communication goes dark, that yeah. it's the loneliest thing in the world. Um, the money's been paid. It's you know three forty five in the morning on this dark road in eastern Tijuana in the hills, and you just were told by the one you've been communicating with, or the negotiators have been communicating with for the last you know eight hours that you'll never hear from them again. Wow. You don't know if this is going to work out or not. Uh, and yeah, again, like I said, you usually, feeling you're in yeah, the middle of exactly. you're like, are we going to land this? It's a really gonna... lonely feeling. Right. Yeah. And so when they said that uh, my, myself and one other uh, one other uh, agent that was working with me, uh, we just happened to drive down this uh, extremely dark, spooky road where we were doing a lot of our uh, negotiations with them and the money drop and all that. And just happened to get off this uh, this road down into this little valley, thinking maybe they meant under a bridge. They said tunnel. And sure enough, our, our guy was down there. Without getting into too much detail, um, the individual we were looking for happened to be down there. And uh, just identifying that person, getting in the car was mm -hmm. one of the greatest feelings I have. That's not even an executive protection feeling. Mm -hmm. I mean, executive protection it's detail. But in our, just in my organization, um, I was just really happy we were able to get this guy because yeah. we literally thought this guy could be gone. Yeah. Uh, you know, wow. back in the day, uh, especially this wasn't too long ago, but um, uh, less, you know, it was less than 10 years ago. Uh, but back in the day before that, when somebody got kidnapped in Mexico, they had about a 50 50 chance of getting out alive, even if the ransom was paid. Wow. Uh, the bad guys learned that by doing that, they were forcing rescues. Yeah. And so because the family's like, well, why am I going to pay if my guy's just going to be dead and show up on the side of the road dead somewhere? And uh, the so, yes, yeah, yeah. so they would call in either the municipal, the state or the federal anti-kidnap teams. Yeah. One or the other would take this case and then they would go ahead and see if they could trace things and go ahead and do the rescue. Yeah. So now when guys are getting rescues and people are getting, you know, uh, arrested and uh, the victims are getting rescued, uh, it became kind of an unattractive business proposition. Danger. Where's the ROI? Yeah. You know? Um, they put a lot of money into it. They'll tell you, you know, they'll yeah. tell the victims and then the victims tell us, they'll tell the victims how much money, how long they did surveillance on their houses. You get a lot of information from these guys. We've been the, spending manpower. No, on no, it. they will. They will, we came out of, they will, they will tell them, this is what we're asking for you. Yeah. And this is why, you know, yeah, wow. and uh, it's, it's almost like they have a, you know, an itemized, like a, you know, <laughs> like a spreadsheet. In front it's of like an invoice. You know? <laughs> yeah, this is what yeah. we're charging you. And yeah, this is what exactly. we've got everything itemized here. Wow. And uh, yeah, anyways, so without rambling too much longer. No, that's awesome, man. To me, that was a great feeling. I've had a lot of great feelings in EP itself, but yeah. that one just in, my, I guess, my career is the mm -hmm. thing that like getting this guy in our hands yeah, and, he, and, he, and he was yeah. safe, you know, yeah. that wow. was, that was our Russell Crowe moment, you know, yeah, so we, got to, man, we got to take man. him to his family. And, and then we got to sit, sit in the back, you know, yeah. you know, <laughs> and, not and, 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 and watch his family, you know, do it. And then we, you know, get the yeah. hell out of there. Yeah. Yeah. Give yeah. them their time. Oh, that's right, beautiful. Right. It's beautiful just to hear the story and go through the thing with you, man. That's awesome. Um, okay. Well, that's, 
I'll think of a more EP related one later, but yeah, that one always yeah. pops into my mind because it was such an uh, impactful thing to me. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Rick Sweeney's a bad man. Lots of experience. I'm blessed to be able to work with him. We're blessed to have him as our training director here at the League of Executive Protection Specialists and to learn under someone who's had that much experience, you know. Um, Hope you guys enjoyed hanging with us a little bit, just kind of industry talk, you know, about some of the things we see out there, training, what to look for in driving courses, the type of protectors I think we should all aim to be, you know, hard skills and soft skills. You know, you work your soft skills at work, you know, you take some courses on soft skills, you know, in training day, master's class, you know, two of our courses go deep into the soft skills you need in order to survive in this game. And I've got endless reports of success just go to our our, um our um, page on the website that's dedicated to the students and you'll see nothing but the feedback about that but um the aim is to make this industry a better place by helping you know agents be able to operate at the level we should restore honor back to what it is we do so we got to take this seriously because remember ultimately it's more than just a job y'all know what i'm gonna say it's a lifestyle Anyways, love you guys. Thanks for your time. We'll see you out there in the field and or training. Thanks. Thanks for being with me today. Yeah, bro. Hanging with us, brother. Yeah, yeah. Boom. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. That's what's up. Bam. This is my MCK. There are many like it, but this one is mine. If you've got a firearm sitting around, a pistol that you are not doing anything with, get an MCK. They make them for every single model. If you want a micro conversion kit, that will turn your handgun into a force multiplier. Get one, man. They are ultra affordable. CAA MCK micro conversion kits are the changing the game, y'all. So if you don't have one, you need to get one. Get one. Your women, children, people that are less physically potent will be able to fire your firearm to farther distances with more accuracy. You will be able to fire your firearm to farther distances with more accuracy. I want to get one of these into the hands of 100,000 more protectors this year because ultimately we are only as good as the things, the nation is only as good as its protection. Your home is only as safe and as good as your ability to protect it. MCK, go get one, drop your handgun in, take it to the next level, out. Boom. Yo, if you're a private security professional wanting to take your game to the next level, go to executiveprotectiontrainingday.com to check out my personal success package for private security professionals. Check it out, executiveprotectiontrainingday.com. And remember, y'all, hard skills do save lives, but soft skills get you paid. Boom. Boom, and to support this podcast, go to executiveprotectionlifestyle.com and contribute to our Patreon account. That Patreon account is what helps me make this podcast possible, contributing to this brand, what we're doing here, making it so that I can bring better guests on, making it so that we can plan more events and just expand the contribution to the private security industry and also to make an America a safer place. Do whatever you can, contribute whatever you can because it makes all of these things possible. Thanks for those contributions. Yo, and before we go, you know I got a shout out to the sponsor, starting out with Primary Weapon Systems, PWS. They truly are the evolution of the rifle. Use Byron for 10% off. Gray Man and Company, the most comfortable tactical suits in the game. Use Byron for 10% off with them. Until the next podcast, this is Byron Rogers, protected by nature and by trade. Out.